So in this demo now, we want to take a look at creating virtual machines in the Hyper-V Management Console. So let's go ahead and bring up the console here. Um, so as you can see in this console, we've got a number of virtual machines, some of which are running, some are off. But if we want to create new ones, we're going to want to come over here onto the right side and click on New, and you'll see there Virtual Machine. So let's go ahead and make that option now. And it's going to bring up a wizard, the new virtual machine wizard. So let's go ahead and hit Next. Now this process is fairly straightforward, so we'll go relatively quickly through it. So this is going to be my test VM number two. Now, when it gets created, it will get created in the default folder location for virtual machines, which actually you can see right here. Uh, C colon program data Microsoft Windows Hyper-V. Now, if you don't want to store it there and you want to put this virtual machine in a different location, check this box and then go ahead and hit Browse. Now, my preference is to put this onto a totally separate drive, of course, uh, but in, in this case, I don't have much choice. I got to go with my C drive. And I'll choose a, a folder I've created called Virtual Machines. Select Folder. And now it's going to be easy for me to find this virtual machine later. It's not buried so deep in a, uh, a program directory. Uh, but the C drive is not likely to be the place where you're going to create virtual machines in a production environment. You'll want to put them onto uh, some sort of storage array uh, that has high-speed storage. Let's go ahead and click Next. Then we specify the amount of memory. This will be the RAM that will be allocated. Let's go ahead and say that we're going to do a gig of RAM. And I'll go ahead and hit Next. Now, configure networking. We've talked a lot about networking. So when I choose here, I can choose, well, which network, which virtual network do I want to plug this VM into? So we'll go ahead and put it in my test lab network and click Next. And now as a part of this wizard, I have the opportunity to create a virtual hard disk, use an existing virtual hard disk that I might have created earlier, or decide that I'm going to attach a virtual hard disk later. Now, if you create a virtual hard disk now, it doesn't give you a choice as to type. It will be a dynamically expanding virtual hard disk. So that means that whatever uh, you might have wanted, you're not going to get the choice. So you may want to make the choice that says attach all a virtual hard disk later. Then you can create them as a separate operation and combine the two, the virtual machine and your hard disk, uh, post-creation. So let's just go ahead and create a dynamically expanding disk. And notice that it's, by default, wants to name the disk the same as the name of the virtual machine. And that's fine for me right now. I'm going to hit Next. Now, in terms of an operating system, do I want to install an operating system now or later? Basically, I have the option to install an operating system from a CD if I wanted to or uh, to do it later. Uh, you can also install from a floppy, uh, a boot floppy disk if you have any of those. Now, that would likely be uh, a network bootable disk so that you can boot off the network. Uh, or install an operating system from a network-based installation server such as Pixie. If you're going to do Pixie-based installations, this is a good option to choose here because it will configure the network properly for Pixie. I'm just going to say install an operating system later. Go ahead and hit Next, and we'll choose Finish. And we have now created a new virtual machine. Now, once, we're, once we have created that virtual machine, there may be other settings that we want to make changes to. All right, so here is my test virtual machine, and I can take a look at the settings of that virtual machine. And there's a number of different elements in there that I can edit. I can come in and change the memory. Uh, I can change the CPU allocation if I wanted to. Say we want four CPUs. Um, I can change the hard drive. And this is where I could come in order to, um, if I s said I wanted to add a hard drive later, then I would come here and I could create a new one from here, which when I would make that choice, it brings up the new hard disk wizard. Or I can, of course, edit this property uh, editing the virtual hard disk that's in there, and that would be to compact, convert, or expand the disk. Click Cancel. I can inspect, or if I click Browse, it gives me the opportunity to point to an existing hard disk somewhere that I might want to utilize. Let's go ahead and click Cancel here. We can look at uh, a lot of those settings in more detail later. But there we've created a virtual machine. Now, what did it create? Let me go ahead and open up here uh, my C drive the virtual machines folder that I created. And you'll see it created a subfolder based on the name of the virtual machine. 
Inside of there is the VHD file, and inside of there is a folder called Virtual Machines. Now notice these great big long GUID names of files, and they're XML-based files. This is the configuration of your virtual machine. And the GUID is representative of what they call a machine ID. Every virtual machine you create gets assigned a unique identifier. So that even if we change the name of the virtual machine, this unique identifier remains consistent so we know that it's the same uh, machine in every instance. So the XML, as, a, as an example, if I open up and view that XML, you can see that it contains a lot of the elements, like a SCSI controller. Uh, as I scroll down, here's the network adapter information. Right in here would be memory information and so on. So all of the information that you have in your virtual machine configuration is actually stored in an XML file. So all of these items together make up the virtual machine, the virtual hard disk and the corresponding configuration files. Now they don't have to live in the same folder together. The hard disk could be on a totally separate drive from its configuration. In this case, they are together, uh, which certainly makes it a little bit easier to find all the different elements uh, that make up that virtual machine. So we've created a new virtual machine by using the new virtual machine wizard. And that is sort of the number one and most basic way of generating uh, virtual machines.